heavenly Now let's all be seated for the scripture. We coming from the book of Daniel. Just one second. Daniel chapter 7. Beginning at verse 2. Daniel said, I saw my vision at night. In the vision, the wind was blowing from all four directions. These winds made the sea very rough. I saw four huge animals come up from the sea. Each animal was different from the others. The first animal looked like a lion, but it had wings like an eagle. I watched this animal until its wings were torn off. It was lifted from the ground so that it stood up on two feet like a man and it was given the mind of a man. And then I saw a second animal before me. It looked like a bear. It was raised up on one of the sides, and it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. I was told, get up and eat all the meat you want. After that, I looked, and there before me was another. This animal looked like a leopard. And the leopard had four wings on his back. The wings looked like a bird's wings. This animal had four heads. It was given power to rule. After that, in my vision at night, I continued looking. There in front of me was a fourth animal. This animal looked terrible and very strong. It had large iron teeth. It crushed and ate what it killed. While I was thinking about the horns, another horn grew up among them. It was a little horn. It had eyes like a person's eyes. It also had a mouth, and a mouth was bragging. The little horn pulled out three of the other horns. Daniel chapter 7, verses 1 through 8. At this time... We have Sister Mary Wardrop with prayer. Almighty and all wise God. We pause this afternoon, Father God, to 
give you thanks and praise for allowing us to once again, Father God, to come to the house of worship on this candlelight service and remembering one of your faithful servants, Lula Taggart. But Father God, as we've come, our hearts are overflowing with thanksgiving and praise because of who you are. And we realize that you are such a great God and a wonderful God. And if it had not been for you, we wouldn't be here. And Father God, as we came through the streets, as we left our morning services, and here we are once again, Lord, many things could have happened in the twinkling of an eye, but because of your grace and mercy, here we are today. And we thank you. But Father God, we ask that you would bless the leadership of this Buffalo District. Bless all the pastors, Lord, who give leadership. Bless the district officers who are continuing the work of mission. And let our not be in vain when we came today, Lord, that we will continue to let our light shine and that we might be the people you would have us to be and to represent you in a way that you should be represented. So Father God, we just thank you today. Bless the speaker who shall bring forth the word and let our hearts and our minds be open to hear the message. And what we need to do to make changes or so that we can improve our serve. So we thank you this day, this thought, Father. We ask that you would bless the choir and all those who've come today as us individually and collectively as we continue to do the work of kingdom building. In the name of Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Savior, amen. That we have been revived when we shall be this place. Amen, amen, amen. At this time, we'll have a selection from the Buffalo District Right Now Choir. All right, right now. Buffalo District, let's gather.
At this time, as our candle lighters, please come and assemble at the altar. Our quadrennial theme is reaching the masses in an ever-changing world. The journey continues. For this conference year, our phase number two, equality and justice. As our candlelighters lighters read, it's gonna, there you go. It's gonna reflect what, we, what we're reading in our guidebook that has been given to us. And it's gonna reflect equality and justice. I light this candle to remind us of equality and justice. Equality is a process wherein we intentionally creating the conditions for all people, partic particularly those who are historically marginalized, to experience full thriving. Justice means fair treatment of historically marginalizing the communities to ensure their thriving and healing from generations in justice. I light this candle to remind us that equality is the concept of moral righteousness, accepting our creation and the love God has for us is the key to understanding our need for proper equality. I light this candle to remind us that justice simply means to set things right. Yes, As yes. Christian, the answer is simple. Our sense of justice is modeled by our creator God, who is loving, kind, merciful, righteous, holy, and just. I light this candle to remind us we must work to guarantee fair treatment, access, opportunity, and advancement of the undeserved and underrepresented, while at the same time striving to identify and eliminate barriers that have prevented the full participation of some, some groups. I light this candle. I light this candle to remind us the principle of equity acknowledges that there are disadvantaged populations and that fairness regarding unbalanced conditions is needed to assist equality and the provision of effective opportunities to all groups. I light this candle to remind us before we go and teach our nations, we should be sure that we understand the biblical definition of missionary work. God has gifted each of us with talents and abilities that can be used for his glory, and we are grateful. I light this candle. The candles aren't, at this time, we will be extinguishing our candles. The candles are now out, but the light of equality and justice should never be extinguished. The light should be a beacon to us toward the fulfillment of our great commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. At, at this time, may we all stand and sing the next two verses of Silent Night.
may be seated a self for the WH and OM Society and the Home Mission. Please continue to stand. WH and OM and Home Mission, please continue to stand as we say the prayer in unison. Lord, we are missionaries who want to be continuous labor for you. Take us, we plead, and use us with a new understanding, new direction, new hopes and dreams, that we may move forward toward peace. Keep us working for the Master, that our light will continue to shine for all to see. Amen. You may be seen. At this time, we have our presiding elder, Reverend Kevin D. Coakley and Eula Rodriguez, who will bring our offering appeal. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Little song down south that says, Let Jesus fix it for you. Oh, for he knows just what, what to do. Whenever you pray, let him have his way. Let Jesus fix it. Can you put your hands on it for you? That's the whole song. Let Jesus fix it for you. For oh, he knows just what to do. Whenever you pray, let him have his way. Let Jesus fix it for you. Can y'all put your hands together? Let Jesus fix it for you. Oh, for he knows just what, what to do. Whenever you pray, for you, amen. Certainly we're glad, we're glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Let's give God a great hand clap of praise, amen. Glory, now that was kind of, for me probably, but let's give the Lord a great hand clap of praise for this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I know some of you have had your Sunday dinner already and that food has settled, amen? And you're ready, and somebody said, not everybody. And you're ready for these, the bills to beat whoever we're playing tonight. The four, oh, listen, the 49ers don't stand a chance, especially in our weather tonight, amen? So consider it a win. Thank me later. Amen. I hope they hope there are no 49ers here tonight. Any 49er fans tonight? Hey, yeah, we do have a 49er fan. Oh, wow. Well, we've, I, I think we're playing here in Buffalo. We have home, home field advantage. So we just give God thanks. But tonight, we've come to praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And so we're going to give God our very best tonight as we have a speaker tonight that will bless us. I'm going to ask that everybody tonight, as you see, the crowd is a little uh, scanty tonight, just a little skeletal. We want to be able to bless this uh, annual 
Glory to God. This annual WHOMS Overseas Missionary Society Lula Tigard Candlelight Worship Service uh, that we know that our very own Sister Sharon Jones uh, spearheads. We want to be a blessing to her. Amen? Amen. So I need your help. And if everybody tonight blesses us with a $25 gift, Amen. If everyone blesses us with $25, we'll be able to meet our goal tonight by just blessing the department. If you would so kindly stand with your $25. Pastor, I don't have $25. Glory to God, but I, I'll give the very best I can. Would you please stand? Amen. Make your checks payable to WHOM Society. Thank you. It's so good to see the missionaries standing with $25. I need others of you to please stand with us tonight with 25. We want to bless, amen, Sister Sharon Jones and her department, the WHOMS. These ladies, let me share this with you. These ladies have a mammoth of a assessment, an annual assessment. And so everything that they do, they're doing to support their department. And we want to bless them because they work exceptionally hard throughout the year to see to it that their budget is met and souls are saved. Amen, somebody. So I need each of you to stand with $25 or at this point, your very best gift that you can. I want to thank God for Brother Frank Williams in $50, and we'll be reporting that even now. I want to thank you for those of you that are giving in your offering. Please make sure that you're making your checks payable to WHOMS. Amen. All right, those of you that you don't have 25, but you have the very best gift, would you please stand with your very best? <clears throat> Glory to God. Stand with your very best gift, and we will be directed by uh, the ushers to give. Again, make all checks payable to WHOMS Society. Amen. Please be directed by the ushers starting at the rear. Coming down the center aisle, bringing your gifts. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so very kindly. Thank you so much for your gift. Thank you, Brother Clark, local preacher. Thank you for your gift of $25. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Yarborough. Thank you so very much. So good to see Miss Siobhan Patterson with us. Thank you for your gift, Lady Patterson. Thank you so very much. Master Trey is giving in the offering. Bless you. Thank you. So good to see each of your faces. And those of you that are online, if you'd like to give, we'll give via Cash App. All right, if you do Cash App for Buffalo District, is that all right, Missionary President? We will do Evangelism Department. Those of you that are online and you want to be a blessing to this department, you want to give. I know Reverend Bufford is on the line. It will be dollar sign Evangelism Department. Amen. We want you to give of your offering. We want to take a few moments for those who are online to make sure that they are able to bless this department. These are some hard-working disciples in the kingdom of God, and we want to be a blessing to them in their annual report. And I want to make sure that we call out the names of those who have given online. Again, it's dollar sign evangelism department. Amen. Give your best gift. I see them coming in. Sister Regina Brackman, thank you for $25. Amen. Again, it's dollar sign evangelism department. Thank you, Sister Regina Brackman for $25. Sister Martha Connor for $25. Thank you. They're coming in. We want to take a few moments. Thank you, Sister Charvet Carter. Thank you. Brother Stephen Rodriguez. For 15 and Sister Carter for 15. Thank you so much. Let us stand as we bless the offering at this time. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. All things come of thee.
In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. We thank Sister, you may be seated. We thank Sister Gwendolyn Lane Bragg. The figure doesn't show, but we thank you for a cash app of $105. At this time, um, we are to have our candlelight service. So all the, all at, the, at the last annual conference, the Buffalo District, we have 18 persons to be stowed, and they all could not come to the annual conference. And as we can see tonight, because of our nice little storm, they all could not come tonight. But we do have one individual. At this time, we're going to ask um, Brother Anthony, Master Anthony Goodwine, to come forward. And that, and hopefully this Saturday, when we have Super Saturday, hopefully the other participants will be there, and then we will give the charge. Then Anthony will be there, and he'll receive the charge at that time as well. Amen. At this time, now we'll be granted a solo by my very own Elena Jones, my daughter in love. Hallelujah. You, Lord, you are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. For all the things you've done for me and no one can worship you for me here's my worship all of my worship father receive my worship all of my worship here's my worship all of my worship father receive my worship all of my worship because you lord you are worthy oh yes you are and no one can worship you for me for all the things you've done for me so many great things and no one can worship you for me oh here's my worship all of my worship Father, receive my worship, all of my worship, oh, here's my worship, all of my 
worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. Oh, as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. my worship, all of my worship, Father receive my worship, all of my worship, here's my worship, all of my worship. Father, receive my worship, all of my worship. Here's my yes, Lord, completely yes, Lord. Yes to your will, Lord, completely Yes, Lord, here's my worship. All I have is my worship. Father, receive my worship. All of my worship. Amen. Just a little bit on our person who's going to give us the meditation today. Sister Bridget, Bridget Richardson, raised at St. Mark AME Zion Church under the Reverend Wells, the grandfather, Reverend Dunn, assistant pastor. She's been educated for 32 years. She's a member of the Bethesda World Harvest International Church for over 35 years. She's a mother of three, the grandmother of three. All these things are beautiful and wonderful, but most importantly, she's a child of God. I give you Sister Bridget Richardson. Glory. Hallelujah. I bless his name on today. I'm just going to um, start in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray, 
Lord God, that you would have me to say what needs to be said. Lord, that I not be seen, but you get the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord, we thank you for being here, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, as she read, I was raised in, uh, at St. Mark out in Lackawanna, and that's where I grew up. And it just took me back as a young man got his stole tonight. Because, you know, when you're, when I didn't have a choice on Sunday where I was going to be. You was going to Sunday school. You was going to church. And as you're having this afternoon service, I was there. Amen. <laughs> but I praise God for the foundation that was laid in my life. I didn't always stay with it, but I had something to come back to. And many, many young people today, especially today, they don't have a they don't have a foundation to come back to. Amen. Um, now, this is this candlelight service is named after Sister Lula Taggart. I know I knew Sister Lula Taggart. She would sit up in the choir stand on that front row in the corner, or she was ushering. And uh, as already stated, my grandfather was the assistant pastor. And you know how you're little and you want to talk and all that. All she had to do was come over and say, now, Bridget, I'm going <laughs> to tell your grandfather. And I had to hurry up and get myself together. But I, I praise God. And uh, Martha, I know she's watching. She wasn't able to get here today. Um, but just good memories, good people that you've known on. I mean, Martha knew me probably before I got, was even born. And if you see Martha, okay, Martha, I'm going to talk. If you see her, just ask her, because she, she, my grandmother had her come and give us piano lessons, myself and my cousin. Well, Linda would go on and play the piano, do her lesson, and she, her, her dad was talented. I wanted to play, but I didn't want to practice. I just wanted to play. So um, just tell Martha, to give me one more chance, okay? Just one more chance. But as um, looking at the theme, well, let me say this before I even get into that. I just want to bring greetings from Bethesda World Harvest International Church, where Bishop Michael A. Badger and Pastor Joyce Badger are co-pastors there. Um, and the Lord really led me there, because when I came back to Buffalo, I was just like, God, whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to be, and that's where he led me. And you got to be led by the Spirit of God so you can stay planted. Because when you're planted in a house of God, the Word of God says that you will flourish. Amen. And not so much of what's going on and who said, you know, because any church you, go th you attend, we go through our ups and downs and whatever. But if God has planted you there, yeah. stay there. Yeah. Stay there. But um, looking at the theme for today, it says, reaching the masses in an ever-changing world, the journey continues through equity and justice. And as I look in the Word of God, I'm going to be in the book of Daniel, but as I look in the Word of God, the thing that will cause us to be able to reach the masses, because the Word of God says, if I'm lifted up, I'll draw men. Amen? Amen. But especially in the day we're living, after the election we had, and I'm not going to say nothing else, Amen. on the election we had, in the times we're in, we've got to trust in Jesus. We've got to trust him. Not based on what we see, not based on who's in power, not based on any of that. In Proverbs, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he might, he shall, he will direct your path. Amen. Because our times in the world are not going to get any better. The word of God tells us that. And even as we're talking about the uh, candlelight and letting our light shine what the light and, and many times we want to cause ourselves to shine we want to tell everybody well what I have and what I 
my education and how much money I have and all, all of that does not, at the, at, at the end of the day, it doesn't even make a difference. People need to see Jesus. The real Jesus. Not me saying that I'm a believer, but they can see it in my life. My light needs to shine that they'll know that I'm a believer. Amen. And I'm going to go into the book of Daniel. Um, I'm not going to read. Uh, we all know the story of Daniel. As they went into, into um, captivity in Babylon, the king decided that he wanted the best of the best. He didn't just pick anybody. And there was a certain amount of training and preparation they had before they could even come into the position that the king had for them. And I, I didn't realize it until I, I actually read in, in detail. And you know, sometimes as you're reading the word of God, you can get one thing one day in the same exact scripture. He'll br bring it another way and you'll get a whole new revelation. Amen. Yeah. So there's no, we can never just say, well, I, I know the word of God. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. But as, as it was stating there in their preparation state, Daniel, you know, the king wanted them to, um, wanted to strip them of their identity. So it changed their name, changed their diet, changed everything about them to where there, there was nothing that they could point to that would say, that's where I came from. That, that's, that's my foundation. That's my heritage. And it was by design. It was by design. But as Daniel um, had favor with the guards, he said, just let me eat and drink and not do all this stuff that the, that the king wants. And then at the end of it, let's compare. Now, what I didn't realize that it was a three-year period. Now, I might can go one day. I might even can go two days. I know at Bethesda, we've had 40 day fast and we've three years and I'm in the same area that I'm looking at them eating fancy food and doing all this three years. Now, I don't know how many. I know I could, <laughs> it wouldn't have worked. It just wouldn't have worked. But I, 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 Looking for three years, there was a focus and there was a determination that they had. They were trusting God. That, that's why Daniel told the king, well, let, let's just see, let's just see, because we're believing God. Because this is what our training and this is what we grew up and this is what we know. So let me just compare. And it said that they were 10 times 10 times better than those that were eating the king's meat. So when we trust in God, I don't care what the circumstances look like. I don't care how it appears to be when we've got God on our side. Because sometimes it don't always look pretty, but it will end up because we already have the victory. Amen. As, 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 you were, as you were lighting the candles and it talked about equality and, and injustice, we as African Americans, our point of justice and equality began in the church. All, all of those, all of those marches and all of that that they had, it was the church that up, uh, undergirded them in their efforts for equality. It, it wasn't anything that they, I mean, it was the Black Panthers and some of that, but the mainstay of that was the church. Yes. Amen? Yes. So, as, as they went before and they were trusting God and believing God to do what he said he would do, and let me just read a definition of trust. Trust is a reliance on the integrity, strength, ability, 
surety of a person or thing, confidence. Now, if I'm going to trust somebody, I need to know you. I mean, a lot of you, most of you, I know Cynthia, I know Pastor back here, uh, Pastor Loretta, and I know Martha who's, who's viewing. I don't, I don't, I've never seen you. I don't know you. So there's nothing that I have in reserve to say that I trust you. But I tell you now, and I'm sure you know, Jesus is trustworthy. He's got a track record. He's got a proven resume of what he's done in your life. Amen? And as we rehearsed, because even as the Israelites came across and they took the stones, it was to remind them of what God had done. Because the young people growing up, they hadn't been through that. But they, God told them to take the stones so you'll be able to tell them what I did. Because they're going to ask, well, why are we carrying around stones? What, what's up with that? It's more than a stone. It's talking about the faithfulness of God. And when I have a relationship with him, I can trust him. So the word of God says to go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. So as Daniel and the Hebrew boys came into Babylon, they had already had a, a relationship with God. So when they stripped them of everything they had, their name, their language, their food, where they tried to do that, everything, there was, there was something down on the inside of them that let them know my circumstance might have changed and it looks like it's the worst, but there's a trust and a confidence that I have in God that cannot be shaken. The word of God said that we're like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. My leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever I doeth. Now, it takes time for roots to grow. Because when you want to plant a plant, you might put in a little water and it grow little roots, but until those roots are strong enough for that plant to stand, that's when you put it in the dirt. Amen? But going along with Daniel, he came and he was able to interpret the um, dream that the king had. And, and it allowed him to advance in the, in, the, in the kingdom there. But, you know, sometimes God can't bless us with so much because we can't take it. We can't handle it. We get one little blessing. And we way we don't we don't went south. Can't nobody find us. What 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 you doing? Not forgetting how we got the blessing. But do I want the blessing or do I want the blesser? Now if I got to choose, I'm going with the blesser. I want his face and not his hand. I want to be able to feel his presence. In, in my time of trouble or, or, or just feel his presence because in his presence there's fullness of joy. Yeah, yeah. Especially now the days that we live in. If we don't need, if we don't learn how to press into God, we, we gonna be, we not, it's not gonna be good. And as we do, we begin to reflect him. Because even as Moses went up for 40 days and came back down, he had been in the presence of God to the point that they couldn't even look on his face. He had to put something over his face. Okay, but how did he get up there? Because they didn't want to go. We got to choose to be in the presence of God. We got to choose to want him to know him more and more. Amen? And as, as, as we get in his presence, the light, and it's not our responsibility to show forth the light. The light comes through us right. because I've been in his presence. Right. 
And like I said, a lot of times we, we try to let the light shine and yeah, I got this and I got that and I married this one and I got this and I be quiet. Just be quiet. Because it, it's only by the grace of God that you're still here and whatever you have, he's allowed you to get it. And it just what takes a, just one blink of the eye and it can all be gone. Mm. Praise God that we all got here safely today. Yeah, yeah. And some of us got a little bit more gray hair than others and praise God. <laughs> you know, I, I, I used to dye my hair. I'm going to digress from it. I used to dye, but it was always that one little gray, that one, <laughs> that one little gray. And I said, why am I dyeing my hair? I just gave up that fight. I said, I'm gray. I'll be 70 next year. To God be the glory. Amen. <laughs> Especially when I saw young folks, a quarter of my age, dyeing their hair gray. I said, no, no, no. We're we, we not going to do that. We're not going to do it. They ain't even earned their gray. I earned my gray. They went to a bottle. I'm not, I didn't have to go to a bottle. Praise God. But, but they trusted God. So we talked about how they got blessed to a certain degree, you know, but the enemy is always trying to go after our trust and our confidence and our relationship with God. It can be through children. It can be through a job. It's a lot of different, whatever your thing is, that's what he's going to go after. Amen. But it got to the point that the king had made a degree, decree and said, when this, when this statue comes, you got to worship it. Now, we can say we trust God, we can say we believe God, but believe me, it's going to get tr t tr tested. Excuse me. It's going to get tested. It's going to get tested. Are we ready for the test? And we prepare ourselves in our relationship with him. Because don't think, you know, a lot of times, I know as I was younger, you think, oh, I'm going to come to the Lord and give my life to him and got it made. I'm a, it's roses all the way. No, sir, buddy. But it's a testing of our faith. So, you know, they didn't bow down, praise God got to the furnace and the king was like what y'all y'all not come back no we not they stayed consistent in their confidence and in their relationship and in their behavior consistent they didn't change one day, yeah, Lord, we love you, Lord. I love the song she sang, Lord, I, you got it all. Next day, we trying to figure out, well, I don't know. Mm-mm, mm-mm. They were consistent all the way through. To the point that when he turned on the oven, the people that were going to put them in got burned and died. They didn't even get in the furnace. They didn't get in the furnace. They got close to the furnace. Not only were they going to put them in there, they were going to tie them up. They wanted to make sure, not, not wanted to tie them, they did tie them up, wanted to make sure you will not escape. Now, am I still going to trust him? When my life is on the line, am I still going to trust him? When I got to choose, because anything we put before God, regardless of what it is, is an idol. We idolize our children. <laughs> okay, we, we could, I, I'm not going to go way down that rabbit hole, but good gracious. No, you need to sit down. I'm talking about children. No, they're not, no. You're going to be all right. We idolize our money, our, our, our relationships, our husband, our car, all kind of stuff, our finances, and whatever, because Jesus said the enemy 
has examined me, but he found nothing in me. And that's the point that we need to get to, that he can't find anything in me. Because if you leave a little bit of something for him, oh, he coming for it. He coming for it. So we can't compromise. So they put him, they put him in, and the king looks after a while. Now, you know, Daniel was his boy now. But he didn't, that pride was in him that said, oh, no, no, no. No, 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 you, you good, but, you know, they kind of told him, well, King, everybody buy him now but Daniel. And, no, okay, well. Then he looked in. He said, well, I thought I threw three in, but now I see four. Came out. Hopefully nobody has actually experienced a fire. But when you're in a fire, a lot of people die from the smoke. But when you're in a fire, people know you've been in a fire. There's evidence. You're going to smell like smoke. You're going to use your clothes going to burn up. Hope prayerfully your, your, your skin can burn up. Prayerfully none of, none of that happens. But there's evidence that you've been in a fire. But the word of God lets us know. That these boys that trusted, Daniel and the boys trusted. Wait, 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 wait. I got to go back. I'm about to forget an important part. What did they say before they even put them in there? Oh, I, I, okay, wait a minute. I got to go. I got to I gotta go. I got to go. My little Bible, I, I was sitting there and they said, stand up. My little Bible fell all on the floor. So I'm going to my phone, okay? Pastor saw, uh, presiding elder saw it falling on the floor. He was trying to, he said, he said, it's okay. I said, amen. Amen. Um, okay. I think it's in Daniel 3. I'm trying to get to the part where Okay. Uh, Daniel 3. Okay. But I, I can't find it, and I don't want to prolong the time. Verse 10, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. No, he's going to help me out. I know it's in there. No, I, I, I want to get to the part where they said, but if he doesn't. They trusted him to the point that they said, even if he doesn't. My God, my God. Even if he doesn't. I know he's able and I'm still going to trust him. Because many times in life when we're trusting God, things don't turn out the way we want them to. We prayed for mama, we prayed for our son, we prayed for a dear loved one, and they went on home to glory. Am I still going to trust him? Prayed for a job, whatever the circumstances is, and it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. But the question is, will I still trust him? Is he still trustworthy when it doesn't turn out the way I thought it should? Now, that's the true test. Because, you know, you got fair weather friends that as long as everything's good and, and they happy, they're your friend. But they, they not only do something, just say something. That many times is the truth, but they want a they want a yes band and they want a yes group. No, a true friend gonna tell you the truth. No, baby, I'm I'm sorry, I love you, but that ain't it. Now that's what a true friend will do. Now we can find a lot of yes people, but when it doesn't turn out the way I thought it should, well.
will I still trust him? When he told Abraham to go up and, and, and sacrifice Isaac, the very thing that he had promised, and he gave him the promise, will I still trust him? And you could tell he trusted him because before he left the men, he said, me and the boy are going to come back. Now that's some faith right there. That's some trust in God. But he was willing to sacrifice. So that it, when, when we come to the Lord, that doesn't mean we skip uh, skipping through the tulips and the roses or whatever. It means that we need to have a relationship with him that will sustain us in the times that we're not sure. Well, I still trust him when I don't understand. When I still trust him when I can't see his hand. Will I still trust him when I can't hear his voice anymore? Oh, God, will I still trust him? And that's the question. I trust him and owe for grace to trust him more. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know, thus said the Lord. Oh, God. We got to learn to go back to trust him. It's not just about coming to church. It's about having a relationship. A personal, intimate relationship with God. That whatever come or go. I can still trust him. My trust is not based on him giving me everything I think I want. Because half the time I don't really know what I want or what I need. It's just based on my fleshly desire. But his thoughts are not my thoughts. And his ways are not my ways. And I trust him. I trust him. And, and I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to be gone because we all need to get out of here. It's getting dark, and we don't know when to snow, but I, I don't want to cut anything short. But amen. We, I've been in service. You've been in service. But the, when, when God gave me this for trust, it's the revelation used to save them. So they knew who God was, and that's what kept them in the fire. But they were willing to go whether he, whether he brought them out the fire or not. You know, it, it, it's funny. We talk about going to heaven. And everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to die. Now, I don't know how we're going to do that. I don't know how we're going to do that. How we going to get there? Oh, God, I want to yeah, I want to see you, Jesus. Okay, well, you, either you're going to go up in the air or you, you, you're going in the grave one way or the other. You ain't going to be here forever. But the question is, will I trust him? Now, I ain't saying, I'm not, I'm not up here saying it because I done got it right all the time. No, sir. But the grace of God is available. The love of God is unexhaustible. So I, I, I thank you. This has really brought me brought me back home, Amen. back home, back, back to my roots, to my roots, as they say, back to my roots. And I just praise God for the opportunity to share. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. God love you. You know, but when, when, when we're, because we're all part of the same body. Yes. Now, we done divided that you AME Zion and you Baptist and you Pentecostal. We, we don't put all kind of stuff in there, but we all part of the body. And one's not more important than the other. Amen. We all need each other. We need each other. So I thank you and I praise you and to God be the glory. Amen. 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 At, this, at this time, can we have our invitation? What's the word by Reverend Reginald Smith?
Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Will we trust him? That's the question. I don't know about you tonight, but I know I needed to trust him to get here. Amen. And I'm pretty sure all of you had to trust him too. But there is an invitation to trust him more than we ever have trusted him before. I'm not saying that everybody here uh, is not saved. I believe everybody in the house is saved, but we can trust God a little bit more than what we've been trusting him. And so this is a perfect opportunity for you to give a little bit more trust to God. The woman of God said this is a season to trust God now more than we ever have before because things are changing. I'm a firm believer in that this is our season and this is our time for things to change because God is raising up an army that can handle the change. And so if you are a part of that army or you uh, have some questions about being a part of that army uh, and want to trust God more, I'm asking you to come up to the altar tonight and so that we can increase the power that we need in this season to trust God more now than we ever have before. Is there one in the house that want to trust God more than they ever have before? Please, now is the door. Now is the time to come to the door at this time. If everybody could stand to their feet. If there isn't one, I'm going to put myself on the altar tonight. Because I believe that I need to trust God more now. Because God is asking me to do that. Is there anyone else who was willing to come and stand with me? And so we can do this together because we are one body in Christ. And so when one part of the body rejoices, we all rejoice. And one part of the body aches, we all ache. So is there one besides myself that want to come up to the altar and trust God more? The altar is open. We're seeking the Lord. Amen. We're seeking the Lord now. This is not for shame. This is not for f fame, fortune. This is about our souls getting right. Our minds getting right. Our spirits getting right in this season. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but we do know who holds tomorrow. And so we're going to trust in the Lord. Is there another in the house that want to come and bombard heaven tonight? Is there another? If there is not another, you can be seated. And so we come, Lord, thanking you for another day's journey. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity, oh God, to come to the throne of grace one more time. How awesome and excellent you are in all thy ways, God. And we give you praise, honor, and glory for who you are. For you are wonderful, magnificent, excellent in all thy ways. And we just want to say thank you, Lord, for counting us in, oh God. For watching over us, keeping us clothed in our right minds. Lord, as we go through day by day, God, you continue to put a hedge of protection around us, God. Lord, as we go through day by day, Lord, you continue to keep our minds regulated. As we go through, oh God, day by day, Lord, you continue to keep our hearts flowing for you, God. And because of that, Lord, we just want to say thank you, God, for you are wonderful, God. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to live for you, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for pleading the blood of Jesus and pouring out your blood upon us, oh God, that we may have a right relationship with you, oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit that leads in all truth and righteousness, O oh God. Continue, O oh God, to lead us down the path, O oh God, that leads, O oh God, to your throne. We just want to say thank you, O oh God, that we came into the house, O oh God, going through some things in our hearts, O oh God. But we know, O oh God, when we leave this place, we will not be the same when we go back to our respectable places. Because we know, O oh God, that you already have been there because you've been with us in this place. And so, Lord, we just want to say thank you for being with us in this place to encourage our hearts, oh God, to trust you more. 
Lean not to thine own understanding and acknowledge you, Lord, in all thy ways that we shall, that you shall direct our path, God. We trust you now for the impossible, God, because the impossible is not impossible with you, O oh God. It may be impossible with human power, O oh God, but with you, O oh God, by your spirit, all things are possible. So, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Your Bible, you said if we lift you up, God, if we just lift you up, God, if we just lift you, we lift you tonight, God. We lift you. We thank you, God, that we can lift you up, O oh God, for your glory, O oh God. We thank you right now, God, for the beautiful things and the marvelous things that you continue to do. Thank you, oh God, for our families, Lord. Thank you, oh God, for our friends. Thank you, oh God, for the church. We want to say thank you, Lord, for opening up the doors of the church. Thank you, oh Lord, for opening up the doors of our hearts, oh God, to receive you, oh God, that you may come in and sit with us, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for your Holy Spirit. Lord, we need your spirit, God. We need your power. We need your spirit to move from heart to heart and breast to breast and soul to soul. Thou so now, God, with the Holy Ghost, God, that we will be changed from the inside out. We need the Holy Ghost, God, that leads in all truth and righteousness, O oh God. Baptize us now with fire, God, that when we go into a furnace, O oh God, we will not be burned, but the Holy Ghost will be able to turn some things around in our lives right now, God. We thank you, Lord, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now sweep through this place, O oh God. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you, oh God, for you just being God all by yourself. Now, Lord, if there's anything that I failed to mention in this prayer, Lord, fail not to grant it in the blessed name of Jesus. Cross every T and dot every I, oh God, that you shall get the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen, amen. Amen. At this time, may we all stand for our hymn of invitation, uh, sing the joy to the world at this time.
success from far as far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nation prove the glories of his righteousness. We all may be seated at this time. In my closing remarks, at this time, truly I'd like to thank Sister Richardson for being our meditation speaker. We thank you. We thank we like truly we thank you for reminding us that people should not, or we should not go out and tell people I'm a child of God, but they should see it in us. They should see the light through us as we work and doing the work and for the kingdom. And mostly we thank you for, at this time, remembering equality and justice throughout this conference year. I hope each and every one of us, as we go back to our individual churches and our um, guidebooks that has been given to us to, from the conference, that we read and continue reading equality and justice as we continue on this journey. At this time, I would like to ask Karen our district president to come up with her remarks. And we have to thank Sister Amen. Amen. And we thank St. Paul for opening up their doors. Amen. Your, your remarks. I'm doing my remarks. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm not going to keep you long because I'm wondering if it is snowing. Uh, or not snowing. And you know what? Uh, she talked about having trust. Uh, will I still trust? And I know that um, the South Towns are getting hit with snow. <clears throat> My daughter has a flight that is leaving uh, tonight at 8 o'clock. Uh, so I was trusting that he would not send the snow this way. But even if he had, she would have been fine being stranded at home with me. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fine. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, and at, at this time, I would just like to thank you, Sister Sharon, for uh, continuing the, the tradition of having our hosting our annual candlelight service as we remember Sister Lula Taggart. <laughs> and uh, we just appreciate everything that you do. And I'm not going to stand up here long, but I just want to say to Mother Mary Waldrop, she had been asking me for the paper from Super Saturday when you did the, um, I can't think of it right now. Yes, your presentation. And she told me, I called her because she, every time I saw her, she asked me for it. I called her the other day and said, I found it in my book and I'm going to put it in my purse and bring it tonight. She said, no matter, whatever you do, do not change your purse. <laughs> so that I would have it. And I just want you to know, because of you, I left my checkbook at home and I had to beg for money for the offering. <laughs> but my sisters had my back. My sister Rita had my back. I just want to thank you all for being here. Um, like they said, our, our attendance is low. I know a few of my officers are traveling. Um, and uh, the 90 was closed. That's why Adolphus did not make it back from his trip uh, to be here in time. We just ask that you continue to pray that they will have sa safe travels as they return home. And if I don't see you, I know we'll be together Saturday. But if I don't see you any time after that, uh, I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and have a very Happy New Year. And a special thank you to Reverend Reggie. I call him Revy Rev. Uh, for coming down and representing the Blackwell Chapel from Jamestown. Thank you for traveling. Thank you, and ha everybody have a safe ride home. Thank you. And now we... Reggie Reg. <laughs> and at this time, we'll have our final remarks from our own presiding elder and the bene closing benediction.
Amen. We certainly thank God. I don't know about you, but I felt like I was in a proper Methodist church. Stand up, sit down. Stand up, sit down. That's a proper Methodist church. Amen. And I saw some of your faces when, we, when they said, all right, you may be seated. Now stand. So we thank God for the missionary department and to Mrs. Sharon M. Jones. I, I don't know, is the M for May? Ms. Sharon May Jones, let's give it up for her one more time, amen. She always puts this program on and I too, uh, I was in South Carolina uh, with my parents and doing some work on my uh, closing of my dissertation. Thank you all for your prayers. As you all know, I have concluded and completed all of the work for a doctor of education in leadership from the Charleston Southern University. And so I'm grateful to God for all of your prayers and your congratulations, congratulatory salutations, and all your prayers. I just I knew that my church and my district, uh, they were uh, supporting me uh, in the endeavor. But I also heard that the storm was coming. And so I, or it, at least it was either coming and had gone, so I was going to beat the storm because I didn't want to be stuck in South Carolina and not be able to make it to this program. So I got on a flight on Friday evening to be here, and uh, when I left, it was about 65 degrees, so I only had a light jack shirt, vest, and a shirt, but when I came back, it was like 28 <laughs> degrees. So the, you should have heard everybody on the plane saying, whoo, when we got in Buffalo, we were like this. And immediately when we landed and went to uh, baggage claim, every cell phone in baggage claim went off. Thought a child had been abducted or something. It was the weather alert saying that we were under a uh, winter warning. And so when we looked at each other, we all said, well, we're back home. Welcome home. So we already know what to expect, amen, here uh, in Buffalo. And we just thank God. I also want to acknowledge uh, Sister... Miranda Wimes, for, for always, uh, and, and her team, for always making sure that Buffalo District is represented on social media. Amen? Brother Kerry Jones, Sister Miranda Wimes, Sister Amara Williams, but in particularly Sister Miranda Wimes, because those flyers that you see that represents the Buffalo District and all of our, our events are done by Sister Wimes and her staff. Let's give her another hand. Amen? And we want to make sure we put a little something in your hand to say thank you. She does not ask to be compensated, but we want to show our appreciation to you. So we'll make sure that the district just gives you a little bit of airport money. Amen? Because you, you're getting on that flight. I heard your mom loud and clear. It sounds like she wants the flight to stay. But you are getting on that flight to Charlotte tonight, and if not, We'll be glad to have you here, amen, to stay with a little coffee or Starbucks money uh, from us to say we appreciate you. Buffalo District, I note the game is not until 8 o'clock, so we're good. I want to share with you that uh, we are planning to take a bus to checkup meeting uh, uh, January the 11th. Please mark your calendar. January the 11th, we are planning to take a bus to either Ithaca or Utica. Which one is it? Utica, New York, to Hope Chapel, Reverend Sharon Barr. So we want Buffalo, you all know we represent the kingdom of God, uh, and then we represent Buffalo in our respective churches. We want to make sure that we are there again uh, to represent our district. So please plan to uh, ride the bus, and we want to thank Reverend Reginald D. Smith, Jr., Revy Reg for uh, consenting that on this Saturday, uh, we will be at St. Luke for the Super Saturday, uh, and we're going to bless them. It was, it was financially and economically more advantage, uh, advantageous for us to just send Jamestown a few hundred dollars than for us to go to Jamestown with about $2,700. So we're gonna send them a few hundred dollars to get a van to come here so that we didn't have to rent two buses, amen? And that is the bus for December and the bus for January. That would have been the Jamestown bus, as we normally do in December, and the uh, January checkup meeting bus. 
that would have just been too much in Christmas and other checkup meeting expenses and then your personal expenses to ask you to pay for a bus twice. So they have generously consented to coming here to Buffalo. Let's give them a hand for the spirit of unity and cooperation. And I heard that Jamestown was being hammered. So by the time I had heard they were being hammered with snow, I texted him and say, hey, you can join us online. By that time, he was already halfway here. So we just thank you for your diligence in being here. So again, on this coming Saturday at 9 a.m., you'll have a hot breakfast at St. Luke. Want to come out uh, and we want to uh, bless God in our Super Saturday where all the departments will be represented. Our youth and children will be leading in our work plenary and our, all the other departments will be giving in their work. We will start promptly at 10 a.m. Uh, everything will take place in the fellowship hall and then we will con conclude with that. I think those are all of my announcements. I think we'll now stand for the missionary benediction. Please stand again. For many of you that don't know, um, on Tuesday at 5.30, Tuesday at 5.30 at Durham Memorial, Amy Zion Church, um, there will be a special announcement. One of our own is going to announce that he will be running for mayor of Buffalo, New York. You want to be there because he is one of ours. Amen? Thank you. Okay. You said Tuesday. Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. at Durham Memorial Church in the Outreach Center. We'll remain standing for the missionary benediction. You want to do it? Ready? God, merciful unto us and bless us and cause this face to shine upon us and give us peace. Amen. 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 Consider yourselves dismissed. Hold on, missionaries, 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 before you, before mission.